how to stop worrying about money. Now, is this even possible in such a crazy world we're living in? The more you watch the news, it inflates the fear inside you about losing your job or the company's going bankrupt. If the coronavirus turns out to be like the Great Depression in 1929, 30% of us will lose our jobs. If that's the case, does it even make sense to stay calm? That only blindly optimistic people that don't watch the news and are afraid of facing the reality will regret it in the end. Should we be terrified about money or take it easy? When I was watching a few videos of Ken Honda, who's a best-selling author, he was saying that there's only two ways of solving a money problem. Do you have a money problem? Depending on the level of how serious it is, most of us do. Ken Honda said the only way to deal with getting your head wrapped around with the fear of money is to either get extremely rich or to learn how to deal with money better emotionally. Now the first option is not easy and not something that can be done overnight. This is the money IQ part, which I will get to in a minute. But what about the money EQ? Emotional quotient. How to be emotionally stable when dealing with money and to not make the money control you and your life. It's just a mindset issue and you don't need to learn every skill to earn money. Money IQ is to gain knowledge of money and how to manage it properly. Tony Robbins also says this, but earning money is equal to adding value. You get paid based on how much value and joy and pleasure you added to someone. If you're working in a company like me, to earn the highest amount is to climb the corporate ladder. Who do you add value to? That might be the shareholders or your boss or your teammates or your customers. Winning new businesses, taking more responsibility, something that adds value to the company. As long as you're working in a company, the money that you receive might be limited compared to a rock star or an NBA athlete. The people they influence and add value to others is much more than a person who has a 9 to 5 job. It doesn't mean they're a better human being or anything, but that's just how the money system works. If you want more money, you need to add more value to someone or to more people. This isn't easy and requires effort. Well, you might say that will take years. I want to have a faster solution to deal with my money problem. Let's talk about the money EQ part. This is much easier to master because you just need to master the mindset. In the end of this video, I will give you the simplest and most powerful action plan to increase your money EQ. So make sure you stick around to the very end. Ken Honda said money EQ is more important than money IQ. You hear so many rich people that feel miserable and not living in happiness. On the other hand, there are people that are not rich but emotionally stable and living a happy life. Where does this difference come from? It's the money EQ. Imagine a container. Everyone has a money container. If the container is too small and you put too much money into it, the container will break. When someone who has a small container and wins the lottery, they tend to use it quite fast. Their money container isn't big enough to hold the money, so they need to let it go ASAP. How can you make your money container big? That's the train your money EQ. When you see a professional athlete that spends all of his money when he retires, that has something to do with the IQ but also with the EQ. What is money EQ and how can we train it to have the right mindset? First off, it's important to understand the thoughts you have around money. What does money mean to you? This might be a hard question so let me help you out. Do you have a positive image of a rich man or do you think they're greedy? Do you think everyone can be wealthy or does someone need to lose for you to win? In other words, do you think money is a zero-sum game? Do you want to earn money to help others or do you want it because you want to prove somebody wrong? Ken Hanna says in his book Happy Money that there are two types of money. Happy money and unhappy money. Happy money is literally happy money. When you spend and buy a present to someone you love. When you receive money from a customer who really loves your product or service. When you share it for donation for someone who's suffering. What is unhappy money? It's when you steal or scam it from someone else. When you don't want to pay but you have to pay like when you're paying for a speeding ticket. When you earn money from the job you hate. The way you receive money determines your happiness. The perspective on how you think of money is critical. But wait a second, why is money so powerful and why do we easily get controlled by money? Money became more than something that exchanged values from the 19th century. It became more connected to our survival. If you don't have money, you can't buy food or have a place to live in. You might end up in the streets and die from hunger. Our minds are wired to understand that money is something to fear. 
Not only that, but depending on the culture or parents you were raised, most of us have money blocks. That if we get rich, people get jealous and people hate rich people. Money itself is a neutral energy, but depending on each person's interpretation, it can turn into something evil or good. Ken Honda explains money with water. When water is running peaceful in the river, it's calm and relaxed. This is a good state of dealing with money. The water is flowing and feels refreshing when you put your hands into the river. But when the river starts to overflow, you start feeling that you're out of control. That the money is controlling you. And when water turns into ice, it can be really cold and hurt you. That's when you have a huge debt or go bankruptcy. But there are people that think like money is air. Happy wealthy people who are financially free don't even think about money anymore. Ken Honda's purpose in life is to make people think like money is air. To make people financially free and doing the job they love. I think this is such a wonderful purpose in life. Okay, you might think I get it Joey. The emotional state of dealing with money seems important. But how in the world can we shift our mindset to turn unhappy money into happy money? Both money IQ and money EQ are important. I'm not saying that you can be happy being poor. Even though I'm an optimistic person, I'm more realistic on this. According to the Princeton economist that won the Nobel Prize, a yearly salary of $75,000 is the benchmark of one's plateau of being happy. Until you hit this magic number, day-to-day -day happiness will rise as you earn more money. But after passing the $75,000 per year salary, more money doesn't have measurable effect to gain more happiness. So in this sense, you need to study money IQ to earn money. How to spend wisely and how to save money. One tip on spending wisely is this. When you're craving to want to buy something, for example, for me, it's a camera lens. Wait one week. And after one week, and if you still want to buy it, wait another week. And after two weeks, you still want to buy it, wait another week. And after three weeks, and you still want to buy it, give yourself permission to buy it. This way, I guarantee you that it can reduce unnecessary things to buy. Back to the money EQ part. How can we increase our money EQ? There are three points. And the third point is a simple and powerful action plan that I promised you in the beginning of this video. One, find a mentor. Now, to be honest, I heard this advice a million times, but for me, the questions always remain, I'm an introvert, how in the world can I find one? The gurus say to add value to the mentor first. But why would a successful and busy mentor want to have an apprentice like me? Well, how I understood this advice of find a mentor is that you don't necessarily need to find a face-to-face -face mentor in real life. You could find a mentor like Steve Jobs or someone who is already dead or even in the social media world right now. You could just follow them and watch carefully what they're saying or writing in their books over and over again so that the mindset sinks into you. Of course, paying $1,000 on their online course might be useful if you have the money to invest in yourself and take a shortcut. But what I want to say here is that you don't need to pray or whine you don't have a mentor. You could start from wherever you want. Two, trust life. You might think what in the world is this? Trust life is to have the confidence that everything will turn out fine. Do you think this is too optimistic and stupid? Trusting life is the trust that no matter where you are, you're becoming the best version of yourself. Focus on yourself, not someone else. Life is not a competition of who's better than who. It's all about happiness within. Focus on the presence, not the past. What is a wealthy person? Ken Honda explains it like this. A person who loves who they are, enjoys where they are, and what they already have. It has nothing to do about how much money they have to be a wealthy person. If you become a millionaire, will you become happy? That's such a misconception. Happiness is always in the presence and in the progress. Don't become a rich person, become a happy rich person. Three, thank you in and thank you out. This is the mind-blowing action plan that you could start doing from today. Are you someone that feels that you owe someone when you receive money from someone else? Yeah, me too. I feel that I always have to give back and it feels like a debt. But this isn't really healthy. Thank you in. Whenever you receive money or a gift or dinner or whatever related to money from someone, say thank you from the bottom of your heart. Thank you out. And when you pay the money and buy something, say thank you when doing so. Thank you in is easy, right? But what about thank you out? When you buy an expensive thing, don't you feel worried or guilty of spending the money? Say thank you from deep down inside you. Feel gratitude when spending the money. The powerful thing is that you can't be worried and feel gratitude at the same time. 
Try it, you can't. Feeling gratitude will reduce the fear around you when spending the money. A happy rich mentality is someone who has money flowing through their life. Who do you think is wealthier? A person who earns a lot of money and spends a lot of money. Or a person who earns a lot but doesn't spend at all. Money is always flowing. If you try to stop the flow and just keep it in your bank account, that's not abundance. Let it flow by feeling gratitude in and out. Earn a lot by adding value and joy to others and spend a lot with gratitude to help and make someone else happy. The more flow you can create, the more flow you can create, the more wealthy you become. Money is only attracted to people who love money and have gratitude for it. Receive it with gratitude and spend it with gratitude. Thank you in and thank you out. The money EQ is all about how to deal with money with healthy emotions. Surround yourself and information with mentors who have a high vibe. Trust life in your future. How can you not become rich if you're constantly adding value to the people around you and making them happy? How can you not gain help and support from others when you're spending money with gratitude and love to others? Have this thank you in and thank you out mindset. Happy money will be delivered to your doorsteps. If you want to learn about the future of money, the next video to watch is this. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Joey, and this channel is all about self development tips to change your mindset and changing your life. So if this sounds good to you, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell. Also, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.